President James K. Polk wouldn't have survived his teenage years if it weren't for a gruesome surgery that saved his life. I'm Bob Summers, and this is a presidential story. As a young boy, James Polk always suffered from health problems. When he was 11 years old, he began to complain of vague, intermittent pains. These pains made it difficult for him to concentrate on his studies. By the time Polk was 16 or 17, the pain grew worse and more intense. Finally, his father, Samuel Polk, decided something needed to be done for his eldest son. So Polk and his father headed from rural Tennessee to North Carolina with the hope that James would soon receive the care he needed. While en route, James's agony was so severe that his father detoured to Danville, Kentucky, where James was treated by Dr. Ephraim McDowell, an early pioneer of ovarian surgery and the best physician in the area. Dr. McDowell diagnosed gallstones and insisted on immediate surgery. Today, medical historians agree that the diagnosis of gallstones was incorrect. The symptoms just don't line up. They believe Polk suffered from bladder stones. Bladder stones have been known since the time of the ancient Egyptians. Even the Greek physician and father of medicine, Hippocrates, mentioned bladder stones in the 4th century BC. Created from crystallized minerals in concentrated urine, bladder stones are more common in older men. Even in Polk's time, bladder stones in children of Polk's age were quite rare. Bladder stones can be asymptomatic, but usually they are extremely painful and can prove to be fatal if untreated. If the flow of urine is blocked by the stone, it can destroy the kidneys, burst the bladder, and cause infection. Today, the treatment of any urinary stones is to dissolve or break them up using ultrasound in order for them to pass naturally. In 1812, ultrasound technology was very limited. And by limited, I mean it was still 144 years away. Even though Dr. McDowell misnamed the stones, he likely still knew where to find them and how to treat them, according to the knowledge of the day. The first problem with surgery during 1812 is the lack of anesthesia which was still 34 years away from being used in an operating room. So instead, doctors prescribed whiskey or brandy to dull the pain, which often did not work. If the patient was lucky, they would pass out from the pain. Perhaps it is not a surprise that as an adult, Polk did not drink alcohol. We don't know the specifics of Polk's procedure, but here is what we do know of the operation during that time period. The patient was stripped below the waist, legs held in the air, restrained with straps, and strong assistance. Then the operation would be done as quickly as possible, which was never fast enough for the patient's liking. The doctor would insert a finger or an instrument in the rectum to feel for the stone, to determine the size and location. Based on what they found, they had two options. The first would be to insert a rod or nail into the urethra and tap it with a hammer to shatter the stone. Those were the lucky ones. The second option was to cut the perineum, space between the genitals and anus, with a knife and go through the prostate into the bladder. The stones were then removed with forceps or a scoop. This process did not change for over a hundred years, except, thankfully, for the addition of anesthesia. The side effect of either option was sterility, which is probably why Polk did not have any children. But Polk did recover. Without the pain, he was able to continue his education, go to college, and graduate with honors. Ironically, Polk's surgeon, Dr. McDowell, hailed as the father of abdominal surgery, died 15 years before Polk became president from appendicitis. Thanks for watching. If this video made you appreciate modern medicine, please help out the channel, like and subscribe, and please visit POTUS.com to learn more interesting facts about the presidents.